Sergeant Bradley Arms from the Temple Army Readiness Center, First Sergeant Jason Williams from the Air National Guard Readiness Center, and First Sergeant Leah Camacho from the National Guard Bureau Joint Staff. Moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Chief Master Sergeant Kelly Reich, Joint Senior Enlisted Leader, National Guard Bureau Joint Staff. Distinguished guests, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for musical honors and the invocation given by Chaplain Peter Zalewski. Taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, the sixth senior enlisted advisor to the Chief, National Guard Bureau, Tony L. Whitehead, the 13th Sergeant's Major of the Army National Guard, John T. Raines, and General Daniel R. Hokanson, 29th Chief of the National Guard Bureau, retired, accompanied by the presiding official, General Stephen S. Nordhaus, 30th Chief of the National Guard Bureau. We've come together this beautiful morning to honor Senior Enlisted Advisor Whitehead and to acknowledge the new responsibility to be placed upon Command Sergeant Major Raines. Our National Guard is certainly known to be a family. So as family, we embrace and invoke your blessing upon Senior Enlisted Advisor Whitehead's mom, Helen, his sisters, Robin, Marie, and Regina, and upon Sheila and Bernard, Nathaniel and Lynn, Michelle and James, Andrea and Dale, and of course upon his son, Joe, and Carrie and Amari. In spirit, we embrace his parents, Sarah and Samuel, Annie Lou and Walter Cummings, and his brother, Ronald, for certainly they are also here in this place. Thank you, Lord, for gifting him with generous portions of family and love and certainly strength. Thank you for answering his prayers when he asked for or simply you saw he needed your guidance. Thank you for his friends of all types and stations who you sent for his support. And as he relinquishes these responsibilities, we ask you to refresh him, grant him new vision, and in your time, new roles. Keep him safe in his travels, both when he is alone and accompanied. Thank you for what he did for all our Guard family, and especially our enlisted force, who are our core and our strength. Lord, as Command Sergeant Major Raines becomes our National Guard's senior enlisted advisor, we recall the generosity in what you have already given him. Thank you for the support that is always there in his wife, Karen. Thank you for the gift of Stephanie and Ricky and Brittany. And of course, for Tilly and Aubrey, Natalie and Chloe. And for the presence of his father, John, 
and Kendra. Lord, we ask your spirit be upon him, giving him patience when things will take time, and for discernment that will show him the nature of the opportunities and the right paths forward. Help him, Lord, to grow even more in love of our National Guard and of our service members, because with love, he will be able to do all things. And we have asked this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Zalewski. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, the color card commander will order the colors to right shoulder arms. Distinguished guests, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the singing of our United States National Anthem by Captain Julian Green. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight 
For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Detachment. Hello. Order. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Sharing this occasion today are many family, friends, and special guests. We are extremely honored to have in attendance SEA Whitehead's family, who I'd like to introduce now. I'd ask that you please hold your applause until all family members have been introduced. We begin with SEA Whitehead's mom, Helen Hamilton, his son, Joseph Stallworth, his sisters, Marie, Regina, and Robin Whitehead. His sister, Sheila, and her husband, Bernard Leftridge. His brother, Nathaniel, and his wife, Lynn Whitehead. His sister, Michelle, and her husband, James Promise. His sister, Andrea, and her husband, Dale Wilcox. We're also honored to have Command Sergeant Majors Rains family with us this morning, who includes his wife, Karen Rains, his daughter, Stephanie, with the Reigns' granddaughter, Tilly, his son, Richard, and his daughter-in-law, Brittany, with the Reigns' granddaughters, Aubrey, Natalie, and Chloe, his father, John, and his wife, Kendra. SEA Whitehead and Command Sergeants Major Reigns would also like to welcome our distinguished guests. Again, please hold your applause until all distinguished visitors have been announced. We begin with Mrs. Shannon Nordhaus, spouse of the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Major General Timothy, or, uh, Major General Timothy Rieger, Acting Vice Chief of the National Guard Bureau. SEAC Troy Black. Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and his wife, Stacy, Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Weimer, and his wife, Kimberly. Chief Master Sergeant Tanya Johnson, Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Defense Health Agency. Master Chief Petty Officer Heath Jones, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard, and his wife, Carol. Retired Chief Master Sergeant Joanne Bass, 19th Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force and her husband, Ron. Retired Chief Master Sergeant Denise Jelinski Hall, 3rd Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief, National Guard Bureau, and her husband, Gary. Retired Chief Master Sergeant Mitchell, Mitchell Brush, 4th Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief, National Guard Bureau, and his wife, Blair. We'd also like to welcome current and retired directors of the Army and Air National Guard, retired Command Sergeants Majors of the Army National Guard, and Command Chief Master Sergeants of the Air National Guard, the Adjutants General, present and past, State Command Senior Enlisted Leaders and Advisors, and all other distinguished guests, general officers, senior executive service members, command sergeants majors, and command chiefs joining us today. At this time, Command Sergeant Major Rains will be sworn in as the seventh senior enlisted advisor to the Chief, National Guard Bureau, while Mrs. Raines assists by holding the Raines Family Bible.
repeat after me. I state your name. I, John Tillery Rains III. Having been appointed the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Having been appointed the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief of the National Guard Bureau. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. Against all enemies foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith. And I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental re reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will and faithfully execute the duties. Execute the duties of the office upon. Of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Mrs. Karen Rains will now present her husband, S.E.A. John Rains, with a jacket that has the distinct insignia worn by the senior enlisted advisor to the chief, National Guard Bureau. S.E.A. Rains is the second appointed service member to wear the S.E.A. rank and the first to wear the Army S.E.A. rank. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, General Nordhaus will present SEA Reigns with the positional flag of the Office of the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief National Guard Bureau. Thank you, General Nordhaus, SEA Reigns, and Mrs. Reigns. You may now be seated. At this time, S.E.A. Rains would like to present gifts to his four granddaughters. Aubrey, Natalie, Chloe, and Tilly. He'd also like to present flowers to his daughter Stephanie and daughter-in-law Brittany. And last but not least, he'd like to present a bouquet of yellow roses to his wife of 35 years, Karen Rains. Well, prior to today's ceremony, S.E.A. Whitehead was presented the Defense Distinguished Service Medal, the retirement pin, and a certificate of appreciation from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force by General Hokanson. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please stand as General Hokanson will now present S.E.A. Whitehead with his certificate of retirement. It reads as follows. To all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief, Tony L. Whitehead, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of March, 2025, signed General David W. Alvin, Chief of Staff of the Air Force.
Thank you, General Hokanson and SEA Whitehead. You may be seated. Distinguished guests, please stand once again for the posting of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my great privilege and pleasure to introduce the presiding official for today's ceremony, General Stephen Nordhaus. How's everybody doing today? Oh, <laughs> what an incredible day. What an incredible day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, last night, we got to spend uh, some time with, uh, honoring uh, uh, CEA Whitehead uh, with his family and friends. And uh, the incredible outpouring of love and support was certainly felted. And uh, today, we feel the same thing for this incredible day, not only for uh, CEA Whitehead's retirement, but for bringing on Team 30 and uh, C. Reigns. Uh, she and I are super excited to join you and Karen 
uh, over the next four years as we get after serving our nation, the 54, the joint team, interagency allies and partners all the way across the board. Uh, to all the incredible leaders that are here today, thank you for making time uh, to be here with us. Uh, from the enlisted corps, uh, the envy of the world, thank you because the leadership from the enlisted corps, from our senior enlisted leaders uh, across our nation uh, is renowned around the world and what makes us so incredibly uh, capable and powerful and strong as a nation and able to do what we're asked to do. The incredible thing about the two leaders that we're recognizing here today is they know it all starts with people, families. All the, all the names were read off multiple times today. Uh, I just want to tell you, I want to start with the Whitehead family. Last night, as each of you got up to speak, even to talk uh, sometimes about uh, maybe Tony's early times, uh, you held back a little bit. But we know that love and support was there all the way up until when he signed up at 17 and joined uh, on his 18th uh, year. He came in and then spent the next 42 years serving our incredible nation. And your love and support guided him through those early years. But man, you supported him through all the times when he went overseas, when he supported airmen and, and the joint force within our homeland. And you could see that love and tension back and forth that made Tony what he is today. Uh, just an incredible leader. Um, and we'll get more into that in just a little bit. And then for uh, C, number seven, Reigns. Uh, same thing with you and your family, Karen, and your kids and grandkids. Just so great to see them. We know your faith and family and friends and your love and support, likewise, are what drives you and what helps you to stay focused where we take care of people and put them first so that they can put the mission first. I want to talk about, uh, real quick, our incredible National Guard, 430,000 strong, right? Uh, doing amazing things around the globe. Currently, over 40,000 guardsmen are engaged either overseas or within our homeland or with our allies and partners. And CEA Whitehead and CEA uh, Reigns leading that team as we work together to make sure that they always feel supported so that they can get after and do the mission set. Because we know they are not only the heart, but they're the muscle of our force um, where we go and support combatant commanders as we execute missions globally but also within the homeland as we respond to fires and hurricanes and floods uh, where your National Guard is always ready and always there. Both of these two have a warrior ethos that is just hard to compete with. Every time I see CEA Whitehead, I feel inspired. I feel my warrior ethos coming out of me and I wanna go serve and I wanna go take care of mission and team. And the same thing for CEA uh, Reigns. I look forward to this time where we're going to do the same thing, but this energy that you all pull in, that we're going to take out to the 54, to the joint force and to our nation uh, around the globe, starts with discipline and that you have had throughout your careers uh, and discipline and maintaining your core values of integrity, service before self and excellence in all that you do, uh, loyalty, duty, respect, selflessness, uh, and selfless service, honor integrity and personal courage as we blend those two as our joint force in the National Guard. But those things inspire us to have that discipline that General Washington talked about, right? Discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small numbers formidable, procures success to the weak, and esteem to all. And then that discipline where we get up every day with that uh, energy that service, optimism, and passion that I call my SOP, my standard operating procedure, where we're serving each other, we're coming with optimism to solve the most challenging problems for our nation or our local communities or our combatant commanders. But it's that passion every day that we get up with, where we lace up our shoes or boots and we get after the mission set together. And I could not be more proud to serve with these two because of their humbleness their approachability, and they're credible in everything that they do. And uh, we know that you'll carry that uh, not only as you go forward, see Whitehead into retirement, but see Reigns into the next four years with me as we'll always be ready and always be there. 
To just hit on their careers, just really briefly, I want to talk about C. Whitehead. Uh, didn't spend a lot of time in your early years, but when I was at the National Guard Readiness uh, Center as the commander there, and we needed the best of the best to go help one of the territories that needed some support, we called and you answered. I never forget the time when you came to my office. <clears throat> we spent some time talking. I could see it in your eyes of what you were going to do for the airmen down in Puerto Rico. And now Puerto Rico continues to do amazing things, and it's thanks to your leadership and support. You then went to Kohner First Air Force, AF North and AF Space, did amazing things there, and then over the last four years. I saw it from afar when I was the J347. I didn't get to travel with you, and then down at Kohner First Air Force a little bit. But I got to spend three to four weeks with you here. And each day that I got on uh, the road with you, a couple as we went down to Florida and North Carolina right away, I could sense the energy. And uh, like we talked about last night, you were up in my game to be there, to be uh, ready to serve alongside you with that energy and that optimism and that service focus. 42 years. You did uh, about 12 years active duty and then 30 years uh, started on 1 April, so uh, April Fool's Day, but I think we got you for 30 years. So amazing job, C. And then to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and then to uh, C. Rains, as your selection, and we got to travel out to North Northcom, everywhere I went, <coughs> people talked about he's a soldier, soldier. He's one of them that can get down get amongst just like C. Whitehead did. Make sure that they can feel your passion, energy into the mission. You raise up a level of our game. And whether it was the time that you went and deployed to uh, Desert Shield or Desert Storm or Operation Iraqi Field or uh, Freedom or the other times that you went overseas to defend our nation, it was always with that passion and energy to take care of not only the mission, but taking care of the soldiers and the joint force around you. Of course, you've had incredible jobs, whether it was a senior enlisted leader to the J-3 over in Indo-PACOM, or as the Mississippi Army National Guard Command Sergeant Major, or the 13th Command Sar uh, uh, Sergeant Major of the Army National Guard. You led with distinction, and I look forward to being your teammate over the next four years. In closing, I want to thank everybody for coming here uh, to recognize these two incredible individuals. I want to thank the families across our great nation uh, as we go into Veterans Day, think about those who have served, are still serving, and those that are in harm's way. We have them in our thoughts and prayers, and we're their battle buddies, their wingmen, as we go uh, forward to defend our freedoms and our way of life. Thanks for being here, and I look forward to serving with you, C number seven. Thank you, General Nordhaus. Distinguished guests, please welcome today's host, General Daniel Hokanson. General and Mrs. Nordhaus, Siag Troy and Mrs. Black, Sergeant Major of the Army and Mrs. Weiner, Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard and Mrs. Jones, and our former senior enlisted leaders of the Joint Force, and of course, SCA Reigns and Karen, congratulations. And Command Chief Master Sergeant Retired, Tony White. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be with you this morning for such a special occasion. As many of you know, we often refer to the National Guard as a family. Last night and today, many of us were fortunate to meet the family behind Tony Whitehead. They're an impressive and a humorous bunch and formed the foundation that inspired Tony to serve our nation for as long and as well as he has. And as General Nordhaus highlighted, as all of you know, family makes our service possible. For the last 42 years, those who have served with Tony became part of his family, and he became part of theirs. For the last few years, I was blessed to be part of Tony's family, 
and he was clearly part of mine. As some of you may have heard me say last night, Tony is in that person in your life that makes you smile every time you think of him, and for all the right reasons. Tony is an amazing leader, a selfless servant, a role model, and frankly, just a wonderful human being, and the friend that you will never forget. Today, I'd especially like to thank Tony's family for sharing and supporting him. He brought a part of each of you with him every single day, as we saw last night, and that made each and every one of us better. For those of us who were fortunate to serve alongside him, he made an incredible teammate who made an impact everywhere he went. A personal impact because he took the time to meet members of our joint force and their families where they were at so he could understand how we could improve our organization to make it better for all who served and all who will serve. Thank you, Tony. I know the team will miss you, and I will miss you personally, but the team you built behind you will write the next chapter as you write your next chapter. And wherever that will be, I know you'll continue to make that place and our nation a better place. Congratulations on your retirement, Tony. Well done, my friend, well done. Thank you, General Hokanson. Distinguished guests, I am now honored to introduce to you for the very first time the seventh senior enlisted advisor to the Chief, National Guard Bureau, John Raines. Hey, th thank you. You know, it's kind of weird when you come up here and you look at that wall over there and you see your, uh, your face there beside Super Biscuit. So, um, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and if you were not with us last night, that, that's his new call sign, Super Biscuit. So, uh, so, Tony, man, it's been a privilege and honor to serve with you, brother. I, I, I love you, man, and I uh, can't wait to see what you do in the next chapter. So, hey, how could I stand before you today and not give praise and thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. He is good with or without my selection as the SCA. But what an honor it is to serve. God could have made me anything, but he made me a soldier in the United States Army. The best country in the history of the world. I know I'm a joint service member now, but I was made to be a soldier. The old saying about when you love what you do, you will never have to work a day in your life, that is how I feel about what I do and what I've done for the last 35 years. Some people never find their purpose, but God allowed me to find mine in this uniform. What a day. I'm excited, fired up, ready to go to work. How could I not be? As I look around this hall, I see the SEAC and his wife, Stacy. I see the 16th and 17th SMAs. I see the 19th SIMSAF, the 29th and 30th CNGBs. Is my old boss, Lieutenant General Jensen? I, now I see my old boss, Lieutenant General John Jensen. <laughs> hey, SEAs four, five, and six, a few Army National Guard and Air National Guard senior enlisted advisors are here, and I haven't even gotten started on my military family scattered around. The Lowells, the Leonards, the Nances, the Krauses. I know I'm going to miss someone, so, so let me stop. I appreciate all of you, and you're all distinguished guests to me. Thank you for taking time to come out for Tony and my big day. I also like to thank the 80 some odd volunteers that we had standing in formation on a off Friday and a four-day weekend at that. 
So let's give it up for them, for them and the 430,000 soldiers and airmen they represent. <laughs> then before I forget, let me thank all the people who helped put the many various events this week on. That is no thankless task that we often forget about. They know who they are, so hey, let's give another round of applause for all of those. Now, I guess I should start my message before I run out of time. And, and you might be asking, well, who's keeping the clock? So, uh, so I'll get to that in a second. But good morning, I'm the new guy. What's that mean? It means that you will have four years to listen to me talk. I listen to the SEAC and the SMA give comments at similar events, and I put a stopwatch on you. Nine minutes to do what you do when you are the incoming. So I want to thank everyone, which I've already done, but I'm going to single out a few, a few special people. I'm going to talk about what it means to be selected for such a prestigious position. And then I'll give you a little glimpse of what my focus will be. Anyone that knows me, has listened to me over the years, knows that I always develop my thoughts around my core values. Today's no different. I like old sayings, stories with metaphors, parables. I heard this one a while back and figured I would use it today to let everyone know I didn't get here by myself. If you find a turtle on a fence post, you know that it had some help getting there. That is how I feel standing in front of you today. So let me talk about how I got here on this fence post. Now, for everyone that thought I missed my family when I recognized the DVs, you're wrong. I just saved them for now. I'll start with what began over 35 years ago with the love of my life. That one decision has single-handedly given me the best chance at success. Anyone that knows Karen knows that I married way out of my league. God is good. Now's the part where you hear so many people start apologizing to their families. I prefer not to apologize for my service and being away, missing birthdays, anniversaries, births, whatever. My being a soldier has been one of the three foundational principles of not just my life, but my family's lives. Not one of our children, our grandchildren, has ever asked me to stop, not move, not deploy, stop working. Serving our country is part of who we are. So I have to thank my children, Stephanie and Ricky, Thank you for our growing family, which now includes my son's wife, Brittany. And if you haven't seen my beautiful granddaughters, they are all on the front row. Aubrey, Natalie, Chloe, and Tilly. Pap Pap loves you, and this day wouldn't be anywhere near as special without you being in the crowd. If you only know me through the last few sentences, you should know by now how I feel about family. It should come as no surprise that my military family is right beside my immediate family. If you look in my family section, you will see a few special guests who I always talk about when assuming a new position or leaving an old one. Again, how did I get on this fence post? Two old rangers who taught me very different things. The first is Sean Edge, who's a giant of a man, standing six foot six. He was my roommate in the early 90s. Not a great garrison soldier, which means he wasn't the best roommate if you desired cleanliness. That's a, that wasn't what I needed in those days. I needed someone to make me into an instrument, and that is just what he did. He beat troop leading procedures into my head until I couldn't forget them. He taught me everything about a machine, being a machine gunner, a saw gunner. He taught me field craft, little things like get your cold weather boots a size too big so you can wiggle your toes around and not get frostbite. I could go on and on, but you get the point. He made me brilliant at the basics. Sitting beside Sean is the guy who taught me how to lead. Not tactically or technically, Sean had already done that. He taught me about how to motivate people and get the most out of them. How to take care of people. His wife taught Karen how to be a military spouse. His unit was always the best unit in the, any organization he served in. They need no intro, but Ralph and Nuet Borja, we called him Old Snake Eyes because of the two gold stars he wore on his master wings. And now he's a Ranger Hall of Famer. But all three, Ralph, Nuet, and Sean, have always been in my Hall of Fame. Thank you, guys.
Now, I have two more guests sitting in my family section that represent the past and the future. My XO is the Army National Guard CSM, Bob Foch. Wife, Kathleen, and my new XO, Martina Krause, with her parents, Francis and Pam. They represent everything I love about wearing this uniform. One had his retirement ceremony yesterday, and the other has as many years left serving as she chooses. I can't seat everyone in my family section, although I tried. So these two and their families represent all the many families that have helped to put me on this fence post. Tons of you are present around the hall today. I love you all, and thank you. The last family member I will recognize is my dad, accompanied by his wife, Kendra. This marks his second military event of mine he has attended in over 35 years. My basic training graduation, and now this. So a pretty good choice of events, separated by more than a few days. So Dad, thanks for being here on this special day. Kendra, thanks for being here on this special day, and I love you guys. I was asked this week about the significance of the SEA rank. My answer was simple. It meant recognition, not for me, but for the enlisted members of the National Guard. We have been around for 387 years, been in every war our country has been a part of. It means that we see you, National Guard. When I look at it, I see all the Guard soldiers and airmen, the past, the now, the future, and what they have done, what they are doing, and what they will do. There is no other military in the world that has a National Guard like, the, like us, and no other military in the world that has an NCO Corps like us. These two things give us a strategic advantage over anyone who wishes to cause us harm. When I look at the new rank, I see all that, but I also think about how to move the needle forward and keep getting better. Our enemies are not resting. They are not beaten. In fact, they are, not considering, they are conspiring about how to defeat us or at a minimum change our way of life. Look at the Middle East, Ukraine, China. The old axis of evil isn't gone. It still exists. I want to make sure my children and grandchildren have a life as equally rewarding as mine. What is our true strategic advantage to ensure this? Our people. Colin Powell said leadership is all about people. It is not about plans. It's not about strategies. It is people motivating people to get the job done. You have to be people-centered. In my boss, General Nordhaus, first message to the force, he doubled down on this. So what will be my priority? People. Our people will underpin everything I do while I work to help accomplish General Nordhaus's priorities, while staying focused on our guard tenets of warfighting, homeland, and partnerships. In closing, we, the Guard, are always there. And the NCOs of the Army National Guard and Air National Guard will make sure we are always ready. General Nordhaus, thank you for this opportunity. Karen and I look forward to serving with you and Shannon, and I'm ready to get started. Thank you. Thank you, SEA Reigns, for those inspiring remarks. Distinguished guests, please welcome the sixth senior enlisted advisor to the chief, Tony L. Whitehead. So what do you say after that type of motivation there, John? I, I told him up there, I said, man, you just relieved me of duty. That's some good stuff. Hey, let's get up again for SEA John Reigns. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's good stuff. I know I got some words to say, but, you know, looking over in the, uh, in, in the, in the section over here you were talking about with uh, our SEAC and a few of our, our folks, I got to tell you, it is good to have the home team with you. I'm talk not talking about my family yet, but the home team, because these senior enlisted leaders, and I have to say that up front, uh, for those of you here, and especially, especially teammates, we got some unbelievably young soldiers and airmen over there. They need to know that the things that you talk about when you're out there in a foxhole or in a truck or whatever it is, they get after it every day. So I want to tell you that you have got some of the best that are getting after what's important to you and your families. And Joe, 
I got that text this morning and I needed it. <laughs> All right, sister. And just know that just in case my, um, you know, my allergies flare up, you know, I, I remember what you said. All right. With that said, good morning. It is retirement day. <laughs> yes. It can't get any better than that. It is retirement day. And not only that, uh, this is, as, uh, as General Nordhaus said, this is a Veterans Day weekend. And I can't think of a more appropriate time than to once say thank you to the folks that have served for us, that are serving with us, and those that will serve, uh, that may be listening right now. So there may be, you know, some type of recruiting uh, hit pinch that come to you in just a few moments. Uh, but I can't, I tell you what, uh, the folks that are here today, I appreciate it because I know with all of the luncheons, breakfasts, and dinners and things that you're going to be going to here in just a little bit, I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me and my family. So that I really much appreciate. And now, uh, for those of you who are thinking, hey, what was the formation doing in their OCPs? You know, our National Guard is, as uh, SCA Rain said, always ready and always there. And we had no idea what was going to be happening around this time of year. But what I will tell you is that we were ready for it. What I also tell you is that uh, those folks that are over there, not only are getting after professional development, but what we're doing in the national capital region is to make sure that we maintain a free and democratic society each and every day of the year, not just now, but all throughout the year. And that is what we do as a National Guard. We take care of the home and we take care of what's happening in our uh, overseas environment. But I just want to let you know, they asked, I said do it. The boss said it's okay. So they're ready to go fight if they need to, and they don't have to change uniforms or that if they have to get after anything. So thank you for being ready. Ooh, all right. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. To our amazing leaders and family here, General Nordhaus, General Hokinson, to the senior list that I talked about, and of course, my replacement, uh, SCA Reigns. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and in particular to our junior enlisted. I hope you soaked in as much as you possibly could this weekend, and I know there's more coming. So please take advantage of those opportunities to learn and grow from these amazing people. And now to everyone that is here, uh, just a couple things. First, uh, for my family in Puerto Rico. I know you're here, and, uh, and just for a quick moment, yeah, uh, we're going to say rest in peace for Travis Atchison. He was our commander, uh, Brigadier General Atchison. And unfortunately, uh, he succumbed to an illness uh, just a couple months ago, but he was an amazing leader. Uh, his call sign was chicken, uh, but he liked it in, uh, in, in, uh, in Spanish because it was El Pollo, uh, but, and that sounded cooler. But he was an amazing leader, and uh, yeah, it sounded cooler. But he was an amazing leader, and, uh, and, and we miss him dearly. But to his family, if they're watching, I just want to say I did not forget an amazing leader who took very good care of the people and who looked out for me. And one of the things he said to me I'll never forget was when I was applying for the first Air Force job. He said, hey, he said, you helped me get my dream job. He said, why not go after yours? And so I, here I am today. So uh, to, to Travis and his family, rest in peace. And there was another one too, John. I love the fact that you were giving those flowers to your wife and your kids. And I'll be doing the same here at the end of my words. But uh, there was a member of, of our extended family. Her name was uh, Mrs. Charlie Mae Jones. She said, don't you give me my flowers when I'm gone. She said, give them to me while I'm alive. And she talked about that all the time, about making sure that you appreciate the people while they're here on this earth. So thank you for that example. And I know I'll do the same, and I've been doing that for years. But brother, I just want to say thank you for that. Now, let's get after all this. First, to my amazing siblings, this is what this retirement weekend or these days have been about. I talked about it a little bit last night, but I have to tell you, there's absolutely nothing like the Whitehead family. They are as crazy as you can get, but they are supportive as you can get too. I love them dearly, uh, and the spouses that they have, uh, you know, you gotta say a prayer for them too, because they decided to marry into this family, <laughs> and, and they're still a part of it. You know, God has been good to us. He really has. I, I'll say this briefly and then move on. You know, coming from an environment, and the Padre, thank you for those words, where there was eight kids and there was five different fathers between the eight kids. And there's an amazing lady up there named Helen James Hamilton who could have said, you know what, I'm not dealing with this craziness, I'm gonna move on. But you've been with us. Some of you would call her a stepmother, but I can tell you right now, that is an amazing woman who has covered us from the day she decided that we were gonna be part of her family and has never let us go. And so for that, I wanna say thank you and I love you. And a young man sitting next to her, Joe, well, he's got facial hair, we'll get past that. <laughs> and uh, he is awesome as well. Um, a man of a few words. I get a text from him every morning saying, uh, good morning, pops. And that's as far as it goes. <laughs> But he has been that way all of his life. Uh, for those of you who are Florida Gator uh, graduates, go Gators. 
That's him. And for those of you who got a problem with it, deal with it. But uh, amazing young man who has done phenomenal things. And on October 10th, he became a new dad for the second time. Ho oh, oh. Appreciate that, brother. All right, now, change of responsibility. You know, this amazing event that took place today, you know, it's a time honored tradition, but you hit on a couple things, uh, SEA range, that really resonate with me and, and so do the leaders. Our folks are ready. No matter what we hear about our, our men and women in uniform, they are ready. No matter what anybody says about who we are and what we do as a National Guard, as the United States Armed Forces, we are ready. Because I can tell you right now, we have got folks in uniform that are ready to run to the fire, ready to run to the fight. And when folks say something about them, guess what? Our response is, you're welcome. You're welcome because the things that you can say, you say it because we cover you. The things that you do, we cover you. And whatever happens, our National Guard, again, is always ready, always there. As we talk about on the Army side, the large-scale combat operations that we feel that would be coming, our soldiers will be ready for our airmen with the new Air Force model for the, for the force construct. They will be ready. Don't worry about the fact that you don't have the information right now. Just know that we've got the right team in the right place right now. So when it's time for whatever the Air Force gym model looks like when it's time to go down range, when they have to lay that, that force uh, structure down and when large scale combat operations has to happen, our armed forces will always be ready. And again, our National Guard will take, take their, their place, a rightful place, in making sure that it happens for our national defense strategy. And those two hard charges right there, General Nordhaus and S.A. John Reigns, will ensure that it happens. Cool? All right, now, it is time to go home. Last night I talked about the dream account, and it's on the back of your programs if anybody saw that. Was it the ones last night or today? The dream account I talked about was the fact that the reality is we are living in the dreams of those that came before us. And particularly me, because this is my day, I think about those, say, around 1800 with the, uh, with the revenue cutter service for our Coast Guard. From the Navy, USS Mason, our Montford Port Marines, our Tuskegee Airmen, our Buffalo Soldiers, and even today, Jacob Simmons for our Space Force. These are folks that motivated me and inspired me to let me know that as Norman Grigsby told me in the eighth grade, I hold the truth to be self-evident that I was created equal. That I was endowed by my creator with certain inalienable rights. And among those rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I took that and I put it in this uniform. But make no mistake, I didn't do it by myself. And you said it. I brought Robin, Sheila, Ronald, Nathaniel, Michelle, Marie, and Andrea with me every single day. Those are my siblings. Yeah, that's a long list. <laughs> and they're all here. I brought them with me because the people that I would meet from different walks of life, I had no idea how I would be able to interact with them, how I would be able to lead them. But I had a foundation and those amazing folks right over there that helped me to get ready for what I was going to deal with. And then on top of that, I would join, and who knows what happens when you join after years, and I meet up with this young man named General Daniel Hokinson. And just through conversations that we had when we were overseas, I think it was our last uh, overseas, um, we we'll call it deployment because when you're with him, you don't know where you're going to end up. We started talking about Operation Just Cause and um, just realized that while he was in a helicopter in the air, I was boots on the ground. It's amazing where you find that some of the, those, those, those parallels will help you understand that uh, you never know who you're going to meet, you never know who's going to be your boss, but you better make doggone sure that you're doing the right thing because you're going to meet someday together. And here we are today with the Chief of the National Guard Bureau, at the time 29, who happened to be, at that time, in Operation Just Cause in Panama, and so was Tony Whitehead as a young staff sergeant. That's amazing. Now let's talk about me moving on. I am so proud of the opportunity that I've had to serve this country for as long as I have. The fabric of our nation is something that we do not take for granted if you wear this uniform, and especially if you're here today, because you could easily be someplace else, but you decided to be here. And it's not just to celebrate John and I, but it's to celebrate America. People have some crazy things to say about us, but I want to tell you right now, we don't care. What we care about is that we're going to take care of our soldiers, our airmen, and their families. And part of the success equation for us as a National Guard is the fact that we do take care of our soldiers, our airmen, and their families, and our employers and the communities that they represent. It doesn't get any better than that. That is a phenomenal success equation. And it helps us to do the things that we have done since 1636. And we will continue to do it year after year after year. But what does that mean? 
That means that the dream account that I was talking about, the things that have been put in place so that we can live this great life that we live, it is time for us, if you haven't already done it, to roll up your sleeves and make a deposit. Those things that I talked about, and at the time that I wrote it, it was around MLK's time. It was because he had a dream. We are living in that dream. But it's time for us to do more. And it's not just about any particular race or gender. This is about all of us. This is how we get after what's important. This is how I have served for the last 42 years. Of course, I started out because I needed some money. But after a while, what we learn as, a, as an entity is that selfless service becomes who we are. That's in our heart. That's what makes us the best armed forces in the world. And then lastly, as our non-commissioned officers that the SEA ranks talked about, the absolute best and the brightest. They can take the field like nobody's business and when the world watches us do what we do and they want to wonder what our secret sauce is, they want to come get it. That state partnership program, if you don't know about it, in the National Guard, come get some. I guarantee you John Raines will be ready to tell you about it and so will Darrell Plute if he's in the audience. But it doesn't happen without a great team and this is a great team. And then lastly, to my siblings. I want to tell you right now, these 42 years were made possible because of you. And that's the cue for the flowers. They're going to get them while they're alive. Everything that I have done, everything that has made me successful is because at the end of the day, there was just this small, tight group. It was kind of like a squad there, sorry, Major. <laughs> of my siblings that no matter what happened, no matter what came through the door, went out the back door, no matter what was happening in our lives, even when we got on each other's nerves, we could always count on each other and we still do. And so in my heart, Helen Hamilton, thank you for being a part of it. But every day you saw me, you saw Robin Denise, you saw Sheila Vanessa. My brother Ronald passed away in February of 2020, but his wife Regina, and if he'd still been alive, they would be married for 40, how many years? 44 years. And my brother, Nathaniel, no middle name, his name was too long to get a middle, name, middle initial. <laughs> But uh, amazing, and uh, as General Hawkins had found out last night, an artillery man in the United States Army. But we're gonna give his, wife, his flowers to his, uh, his wife, so you'll be all right, buddy. And then my sister Michelle, who takes credit for my career only because she dropped me off at MEPS. <laughs> my sister Marie, who spoke last night, and uh, her, her comments were brought to you uh, by Jose Cuervo. And, uh, <laughs> And our, our baby sister, Andrea, who is still spoiled like nobody's business, who still thinks that she's a baby sister. And I'm going to tell her age, but I will tell you, you're not our baby sister anymore. All right, so you got to give that up. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a phenomenal 42 years. That dream team over there made it possible for me, but the dream team that we have here in our United States Armed Forces is the absolute best that the world has ever seen. And we will continue to be that no matter what anybody says. I am proud to have been able to do what I've done for these years, and I didn't do it by myself. I did it because I was surrounded with some of the most phenomenal people that are right here in this room, too. You made it possible, and when I needed to hear the truth, you gave it to me. And I know you did not too long ago, Aaron, didn't I? didn't forget that, brother. I love you. Thank you for everything that you've done for our nation. And I'm looking at my, my brothers and sisters right now because I didn't do this without you being there with me every step of the way. General Nordhaus, General Hokinson, my battle buddy, who talked me off the ledge on Sunday. <laughs> SEA Reigns, my replacement. It is my honor and my privilege to turn the keys over to you. Thank you, and have an awesome day. Thank you, SEA Whitehead, both for those motivational remarks and for your 42 years of faithful and honorable service to a grateful nation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing of the Army and Air Force songs by the 249th Band of the Army.